Ladies and gentlemen, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rishi and we are at episode 8 of Mental Math Tricks series. And in this episode, we are going to take a look at something relevant to the previous episode where we talked about how to memorize numbers using letters. And in this video, I will be demonstrating it to you in full effects. So, without any further ado, let's begin. So, if you have been following, you would realize that in the previous video, we talked about how we can give a number, a letter to represent it, so that we can make a connection between letters and numbers. So, I'm going to show you how you can actually use it. For instance, we have one of the most famous mathematical character, which is the pie. Not the eating kind, the other one, this one. So, as we know, pi is an irrational number, which means that the decimal points will go on forever. There is no end to it. And if you have not heard of it, let me tell you something. For pi, there are infinite numbers, right? So there are actual competitions, memory competitions, where athletes, who we call them as memory athletes, go and try to recite the digits of pi. So when we first see those kind of competitions where people show off the memory skills, we assume that they are born with it or they're just gifted. True, that's sometimes true. But in most cases, it's not exactly the case. In most cases, people learn how to use their memory optimally so that they can memorize numbers efficiently. So let's take pi. 3.141 five nine two six five three eight dot 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 let me bring it to the center so here we have the first 11 numbers for pi so i'm going to tell you how you can actually use it so that you too can participate in memory competitions hopefully in the future and memorize the digits of pi and recite it correctly. Alright, so the trick here is, first, since you are starting out now, I would recommend you to take a piece of paper and a pencil and start writing. As you can see, each number corresponds to a different letter. So for 3, the alphabet will be M. For 1, it is T or D. Let's just put T or D. Then for 4, we have R. For 1, we have T or D. And then for 5, we have L. For 9, we have B or P. For 2, we have N. For 6, we have SH or CH sound. For 5, we have L again. For 3, we have M. And for 8, we have F or V. So the moment you've gotten this, don't panic. So what we're going to do is we're going to make words. This is the second method that I tried out. Because in the first method, what I learned is to assign each number with a different word. Although it seemed to work for a smaller set of numbers, as I went to bigger set of numbers, it kind of seemed impossible. So that's what that's where I came across this major method system, which allowed me to memorize more than few numbers as one word. Okay, so we have M, T, and R. M, T, R, and T. So what comes to my mind is meteorite. Meteorite. So remember, major system works based on how you hear and how you pronounce the word. When you say meteorite, what you're pronouncing is the M 
and then the T, and then the R, then the T again. The vowels are neglected because in the major system, all we have are the consonants. So, meteorite. So, the word meteorite in your mind will mean 3.141. That's it. Then, let's move on to the next part. We have L, B, L, P, N, S, H. So, give it a think. So, what comes to my mind is L, B stands for L and B will be lab. Lab. Then, after that, I have N and S, N and S. So, what comes to my mind is H. Don't worry, you don't have to make every single word here to make sense. First, list down the things that you can make words out of. Then we have meteorite, lab, inch. Then we have 538, let's see. So, we can we have the word line. And then for F and V, so since we do not have any other word let's just say fee all right now the words meteorite lab inch lime and fee actually corresponds to this number 3.141592653.8 so what we have done here is we have changed numbers into words so what can you do is to make up a story with all of the elements that the words represent as the main parts of it. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have meteorite, lab, inch, lime, and fee. Although all of these words don't make much sense together, we can make a story, a crazy story. Remember, the story has to be crazy. If it is very normal, you won't actually remember it. The weirder, the better. So what I would do is, Let's start a story. One night, you are on a bridge overlooking a river and suddenly, in the night sky, something bright is approaching you. And you look up and you realize it is a meteorite. Alright, so there's a meteorite coming to you. And you happen to be an astronomer. You happen to be someone who studies about meteorites and stuff. So you immediately call your lab. You call your lab and then you call your lab so that your colleagues can take out the telescope and take a look at the meteorite coming towards you. So if you are wondering what is this is, this is actually the James Webb telescope, the new telescope invented by NASA. Okay, that's just for context. And then you realize, and then your colleagues realize there is indeed a meteorite coming towards your exact location. And then what happens is they start to they start using their technological devices to calculate how big the meteorite actually is. I've given you a ruler, but of course, you know that you can't use ruler to measure the meteorite. And then you start using the techno technology in order to calculate the dimensions of the meteorite. You, might, you may ask why, so that they can calculate how much of an impact it would create if it collides with Earth. While this is happening, suddenly behind you, a grandma is walking by, just out of nowhere. Then she's selling lime in her basket. And you wonder, what is a grandma doing at this time, at night, trying to sell lime? And then, you are curious, so you stop and ask her, Grandma, what are you selling at this time when there is no one here except for me? And she said, I am from a poor family and I need money to pay for my grandchildren's fees. They're studying. And then, and see. That's it. So, that entire story, that entire story, although it might seem lengthy because I'm telling you the story, if you were to imagine it in your, inside your head, it's going to be much, much faster and much, much shorter. So, the entire story I told you encompasses of the words that we just mentioned. 
So let's go through the story one more time. This time, don't look at any, don't don't rewind or anything. Just try to see how much of the story you can remember. So the f- uh, first things first. You are standing at a bridge overlooking a river, and then you notice something bright from the sky, coming towards you. And that happens to be a meteorite. Awesome. Then after that, what happens is, you call your lab, which is lab, and then to tell your colleagues to look through the telescope to look at what it is, and then they immediately start calculating, so inch by inch, so that they can estimate the impact the meteorite will have if it collides with Earth. Then after inch, and then suddenly. Out of nowhere, a girl comes behind you, and she's telling lie. When asked why, she said she's from a poor family and needs money to pay for her grandchildren's fee. And that with that we have managed to remember these five words, and these five words actually correspond to the pi, to the digits of pi. Do you remember? So me theorize so M stands for three, T stands for one, for R stands for four, T stands for one again, and we have L which stands for five, B which stands for nine, I uh, N which stands for two, Ch which stands for six, L which stands for five, M which stands for three, and F which stands for eight. So with the story we have managed to remember what the first eleven digits of pi are: three point one four one five nine two six five three eight dot dot dot. We have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven digits. With that, we have. With that, I've demonstrated to you how you can actually make use of these methods in order to remember numbers. This is not just for numbers. You can actually take it a bit further, and try to remember dates with this, the dates of historical events. So if you want to make the relation to historical events, and these numbers, use the exact same concept. Just make up stories. The crazier, the better. The weirder, the better. The nonsensical it is, the better it is, because your brain tends to remember what is weird. And what is not in sync. It might be counterintuitive, but trust me, your brain loves to remember stuff that are a bit weird, because it's easier for you. If I ask you, the most embarrassing thing that have happened to you, because your brain remembers it very well. That's why. So that's the concept of it. In the future videos, I will be talking to you about how to use this in mathematics, instead of just to memorize. So, as usual, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Till then, bye bye.